you're planning to go camping, don't. Hello horror fans, and welcome back to the channel. Here we take a weekly dive into the dark and twisted world of horror cinema. Today we're going to take a look at the 1981 cult classic, The Burning. The Burning has been slicing its way into the hearts of slasher fans for over 40 years. Whether you're a diehard fan of the slasher genre, or just love horror in general, this is one film you don't want to miss. So grab your trusty pair of garden shears, and let's get into the movie. Directed by Tony Malum, and written by Peter Lawrence and Bob Weinstein, with a story by disgraced Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein, the Burning came out during the golden era of the slasher genre, and was released very early into the genre that defined the horror for the next decade. What is one of the most interesting details of this movie is that it's actually based on a real-life urban legend from upstate New York, the legend of Cropsey. Cropsey was said to be a maniac who stalked the woods around summer camps, attacking unsuspecting campers. This urban legend may sound familiar to fans of Friday the 13th. This movie, though, takes the legend and runs with it, creating a brutal and suspenseful story that follows this disfigured caretaker, seeking revenge on the campers who wronged him. Weinstein wrote a five-page treatment in 1979 titled The Cropsey Maniac, and was registered in April of 1980, a full month before the release of Friday the 13th, which took the horror genre by storm. The plot, which would become what we all know and love for all horror movies, centers around a group of teenagers at the summer camp. Years before, a group of campers played a prank on Cropsey, the caretaker, which ended in a horrific accident, leaving him horribly burned. Fast forward to the 1981 present, and Cropsey, now a deranged killer with a thirst for vengeance, begins stalking the campers one by one. What sets the burning apart from other slasher films of the time is its attention to character development. The teens in this movie feel more relatable and fleshed out compared to the typical one-dimensional victims that we often see in slasher movies. Shot in the late summer of 1980, the majority of the filming took place in and around existing summer camps to give it that authentic look, while also keeping the costs down. Many of the cast were local to the shoot and were aware of the Cropsey legend that the movie was based on. The production budget was between $500,000 and $1.5 million, and the crew needed to keep costs down, so the cast wore their own clothes throughout the entire production, and the majority of the night scenes were filmed during the day apart from the campfire scenes. The director, Tony Malum, wanted the special gore effects to be graphic and as realistic as possible, so they hired the Sultan of Splatter himself, Tom Savini. Just a few months prior to starting on The Burning, he had just finished Friday the 13th. Savini also turned down doing the special effects on Friday the 13th Part 2, so he could do this one. The kills in this movie are brutal, creative, and incredibly realistic, especially for the time. The infamous raft scene is a standout. It's one of the most shocking and well-executed sequences in all of slasher history. In an interview, Savini has said that the cast were lining up and trying to find out how they would be killed off, which made Savini laugh and made him feel like he was an assassin. As with many of the slasher movies of the time, the music was a huge part, as they wanted the movie to have an eerie and nerve-wracking soundtrack, which they succeeded tenfold. Produced by Rick Wakeman, who was known for being the keyboardist of prog rock band Yes, he was able to create an eerie and atmospheric soundtrack that adds a brilliant extra layer of fear to the movie. This soundtrack gave even the quiet moments in the movie the same impact as the bloody violent moments. The Burning did not receive the same type of commercial success as Halloween and Friday the 13th, 
that the movie has gained a very strong cult following over the years, which is very similar to a lot of the not-so-popular horror movies of the 80s. The Burning has received praise for its high production values, tight pacing, which is very rare for these type of movies back in the heyday of the slashers, and of course, the kill scenes, which are always the most talked about point for this movie, as they were, and still are, spectacular to behold. Slasher movies that released in the following years, you can see the influence that The Burning has had on them. So is The Burning worth your time? Absolutely. If you're a fan of slasher movies and you haven't had the chance to give it a go, I highly recommend it. It's a great example of early 80s horror movies done right, combining a simple but effective story with memorable characters, fantastic special effects and a killer soundtrack. When you look back on a certain decade for horror movies, it's always fun to see where that typical genre got its roots. So if you haven't seen The Burning yet, now's the perfect time to add it to your horror marathon list. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of horror. Let me know in the comments what you think of The Burning, have you seen it, are you going to see it, and what horror films you'd like me to cover next. Until next time, stay critical, stay scared. You can catch our series of horror retrospectives here.